I think the impact that he's had on the profession is not only the research that he's done, but the incredible group of students that he's produced who in their own right have won Marconi Awards, have won the most prestigious awards that our profession has. Uh, and I think that truly speaks to Tom's lifetime of achievements in uh, research accomplishments and in mentoring. Tom's success came from two things. One was to, uh, to pick the right time to move into a new field, which is sort of beginning to develop and then make contributions there. And the second part of success was to make sure he attracted the right talent around him. His work is just uniformly outstanding all through the years. Not, you, you see a lot of guys, they'll have a peak moment and then they'll taper off. Tom has just been consistently productive and uh, innovative. Tom is one of these individuals, there's several Marconi fellows who were part of an MIT group in the 1960s, maybe late 50s, uh, who had been, all become pioneers uh, in the communications world and they were all in the same office together as students. Um, I think at least a half a dozen of the Marconi fellows are, are in that, that category. Uh, that's been quite an impactful group. I think Tom carried that to Stanford. Because Stanford was the place, Stanford was coming up, it enabled me to be with the evolution of Silicon Valley and the growth of Stanford. I also began to work with graduate students and I've had about a hundred of them PhD and doctoral students and they're quite a remarkable group, very distinguished in their own rights. The first time I heard of Tom was uh, after I finished my master's at MIT I was thinking of going back home I was born and raised in Campbell, California, outside of San Jose. So, of course, I went around asking different professors in the engineering department about what school I should choose. And everybody said, you've got to go to Stanford and you've got to study under this rising superstar, Tom Kailath. So it was a no-brainer. I was 27 then when I joined Stanford. My first graduate student, the first who graduated was from Holland. He was two years younger than me. His students from that epoch have gone on and are all in very influential uh, places themselves. I think he probably has more IEEE fellows, National Academy of Engineering members uh, than probably any other pro professor in the United States or maybe in the world. He would also see potential in students which they themselves could not uh, yet see. Often he would uh, share with me uh, about some student of his who was really a superstar. The process of, actually the secret to research is asking questions. And my criterion for when a student is ready to get his PhD is that he is able to answer the questions himself, pose the questions that need to be asked himself without relying on me to pose the questions. So that's the secret of research, asking questions. The one characteristic that I think I, I really walked away with, knowing Tom, was his broad interest. He, he was uh, mostly focused on communication system, information theory, estimation theory at that time, but he was interested in control theory, he was interested in the mathematics of functional analysis. He actually found some uh, important structure in sets of mathematical equations having to do with matrix theory and by uh, recognizing that structure he was actually able to reduce the computational complexity. Information theory or communication theory or uh, uh, lithography or control systems, uh, Thomas touched all of these areas often working with the students. Every 10 years when I change subjects, I change my courses. And I learned more about the courses as I was teaching them. I learned more about the subject as I was teaching them. And the students had the experience of uh, seeing that evolution. Tom has just been consistently over 50 years at the top of the game. This is a rare award that we do not give out very often. There have only been five previous winners. We don't have a set of criteria and it's really up to the board's discretion, but we'll know it when we see it. When I was told about, in a wonderful letter from Bob Lucky, 
that the group I was, that in 47 years there had only been five previous recipients of this award and he mentioned Gordon Moore and Claude Shannon Claude Shannon is the god of information theory and that's where I, that's what brought me to America and that's what launched me in my career to be put in the same company small company as Claude Shannon is still a little hard for me to get my head around but I'm grateful and humbled that my peers, some of my very distinguished peers, uh, thought that uh, I was worthy of this honor. So, it, you know, it almost brings tears to my eyes.